After two years of poor sales, Google TV is back in the spotlight with new additions in hardware, software, and industry partners. One of those partners is Asus, and today we're going to see just what their new Cube can do. Before time began, there was the cube. We know not where it comes from, only that it holds the power to create worlds and fill them with life. Nope, sorry. This cube doesn't have the power to create or destroy worlds, but it does have the making of a high quality media streamer. A Marvel Armada 1500 SoC, two USB ports, HDMI in and out, Wi-Fi, 802.11 BGN Ethernet, an IR blaster cable, and 50 gigs of ASUS web storage makes for a pretty compelling spec sheet. ASUS has taken the idea of a quote-unquote TV box, quite literally, but given the popularity of high-powered cube-shaped objects in Hollywood, the design choice seems appropriate. Given the size and shape of the ASUS Cube, this is not a device that you will be concealing inside a TV cabinet. With its black, corrugated, matte plastic shell, the ASUS Cube certainly looks the part of a TV box ready to assimilate your media library. At first glance, I expected the Cube to feel like a block of some sort of super dense unobtainium, but it's actually comparable in weight to your average internet router. On the other hand, the Cube's remote is weighty and well-balanced thanks to the smart placement of the two AAA batteries on either end of the remote for easier QWERTY typing. The keys of the QWERTY pad take a fair amount of pressure to actuate, but do offer some nice clicky feedback. All the requisite Google TV function buttons are here, but it's also worth pointing out that this is the only side of the remote with number keys. Voice search and pointer functions are toggled from the right side of the remote. The front of the remote is dominated by a directional pad and trackpad combo that does take a while to get used to. The directional and center selection buttons are ridged, so you can find them by feel, but I still found myself making a few accidental on-screen selections. While it really only comes in handy while web browsing, the trackpad is very intuitive and fluid in its operation. I expected checking boxes and selecting text fields to require a fair amount of concentration, but a smart proximity feature assuaged my doubts. What I didn't expect is how often I would accidentally toggle the trackpad. Being that the button falls right underneath my knuckles, I had to always be conscious of how hard I was gripping the remote. This issue could have been avoided by moving the button to the top of the remote, but I'm sure Asus has the reasons. Other nice additions to the remote system include a dedicated Netflix button and an IR blaster cable, which can be used to control the functions of your other home theater components, such as a receiver or the TV itself. Users can also choose to tout their Android phone as a remote by downloading the ASUS mobile remote app. Upon turning on the ASUS Cube for the first time, you'll be guided through a 15 to 20 minute setup process that consists of signing into your Google account, configuring the IR blaster, and setting your TV watching preferences. After that, you'll finally be presented with the home screen, which is, of course, based on a Cube. I think I see a theme here. Sarcasm aside, this menu layout actually makes a lot of sense. Each of the categories gets its own customizable pane where you can pin related shortcuts and apps. The home pane gives you access to all of your apps at once, along with notifications and a set of featured services. Moving to the leftmost side of the interface brings up a space that is exclusive to widgets, but out of the four available widgets, only the music player is particularly useful. It's worth noting that most of the pre-populated shortcuts within the Cube's menus are just that, internet shortcuts. They are not dedicated apps, which makes their functionality somewhat disappointing. The app offering for Google TV is still pretty dismal when it comes to stuff outside of motion pictures. Hopefully Google's newfound interest in improving the platform will change that soon. A major update to Google TV that happened in November of 2012 brought big improvements in speed and navigation of the platform, along with a variety of new partners, including Asus. With a Marvell Armada 1500 SoC ticking away inside, 
The Cube does a fine job of demonstrating these improvements with snappy navigation between menus and very little delay in loading. At a press of the home button, the Cube menu overlays whatever happens to be playing in the background at the time, making for a much more seamless and dynamic experience compared to other media streamers, which might pull you out of the action and into a static main menu. The browsing experience in Google Chrome is helped greatly by the remote trackpad. However, the scrolling behavior is very clunky, with button presses taking a few seconds to register on heavier pages. Thanks to the full QWERTY keypad, gone are the days of painstakingly inputting characters one by one on an on-screen keyboard. Those who would rather speak than type what's on their mind will love the new voice search functionality, which can also be queued up with the remote. You can search through results for movies and TV shows, YouTube clips, websites, and even live TV results if you have a cable box connected. The speech recognition is usually very accurate, which comes as no surprise given Google's work on the Siri-esque Google Now service for Android. At the heart of every Google TV platform is the Primetime application which aggregates video sources from your favorite channels, movies, and TV shows. This makes it a one-stop shop for renting, watching, and recording new episodes and blockbusters on demand. Another great resource is Spotlight, which pulls together the web's most popular video sites that have been optimized for viewing on a television. Some noteworthy sources include Amazon Prime, HBO Go, and Revision 3. Asus brings their own influence to the Google TV experience with the included cloud storage and whiteboard applications. Register for a cloud storage account for access to an online repository of whatever files you care to upload. You get 50 gigabytes of cloud storage right out of the gate, which is outstanding for keeping a media library at the ready for when you're away from home. It's not likely that the whiteboard app will get much use, but at least it gives you a place to keep a running movie wish list. Of course, there are those times when you've just come back from a trip and want to preview your photos and videos on the big screen. I'm confused as to why Asus chose to outfit the Cube with two USB ports rather than a USB and SD card couple, which would have made a lot more sense for the average consumer. That shortcoming aside, the default movie player app was able to play back my homemade footage in a variety of formats without any issue. In summary, the Asus Cube has the speed, thoughtful interface, and well-designed remote to make it an excellent competitor in the Google TV category. If you're looking for a device that can seamlessly integrate with your cable service, then the choice is obvious. A Google TV will rock the socks off any competitor in that respect. However, with cable cutting solutions like ARIO making waves and spreading across major cities in the U.S., Google may need to rethink their strategy as cheaper devices from Roku, Boxy, and others begin to shift their focus to these internet live streams. Add to that the growing adoption of Google's gigabit fiber service across the country, and we could see Google TV's hallmark feature getting cannibalized as consumers rely on a lightning-fast internet connection as their sole source for entertainment. For now, though, it's safe to say that Google TV is an affordable and worthwhile middle road between a basic streamer like a Roku and a custom-built HTPC heavyweight. So, if you see a media streamer in your future, look no further than the Asus Cube. Resistance is futile.